Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Okay. So last time we were talking about transformations of functions. And uh, we still have a little bit more to say about transformations of functions. But what we are going to say is a special case of something that you already know. But it's sort of, it's surprising enough and notable enough to sort of single it out. So there's really just four kinds of transformations. Okay, because transformations, all transformations can be broken into two groups, the horizontal ones and the vertical ones. Okay, so then horizontal transformations play with what variable? X. <coughs> with the x's, right? And then vertical transformations play with what variable? Y. The y's. Okay. So playing with the x's, that's horizontal. Playing with the y's, that's vertical. <coughs> so now, um, supposing that we say that we're definitely using a horizontal transformation so that we're playing with the x's, then this transformation could be a shift or a scale. So shift means moving side to side, but doing so rigidly, that is to say without changing your shape or, or your size. Then there's scaling also. So scaling means uh, getting taller or shorter or narrower or wider. So shifting is associated with a certain arithmetic operation. What arithmetic operation? adding and subtracting, right? So then if you're playing with the x's and what you're actually doing is adding and subtracting, then what you're doing is a horizontal shift. Okay. Uh, what if you're playing with the x's but uh, it's a scale? Then what arithmetic operation are you using? Multiply and divide. Multiply and divide. So then all such operations, all such operations that we deal with, transformations on functions, are of these kinds it splits into two groups because each, it, four groups because there's two splits. Everything is either horizontal or vertical and then everything is either a shift or a scale. Okay, so four different kinds of transformations. Now, one thing that we just glossed over is we didn't consider in the case of a scale, what would it mean to scale something negatively? So you can imagine uh, you know, if you were looking at, if you were looking at your house, say, the house or apartment or whatever that, that you grew up in, and you're looking at it, if you were to scale it horizontally by negative one, that would be flipping it, flipping it over, left to right. <laughs> and then so, a lot of, a lot of children ha actually, actually have this experience, because if you live in a neighborhood of track houses, or you live in, apart in an apartment complex, then what actually happens is that there's only very few actual floor plans for houses in, uh, in, in housing complexes and apartment complexes that are built, built on tracks. Which is to say that you can imagine the neighborhood that you grew up in and you can imagine the place where you lived. You might have had the experience that you had a friend who lived a few streets down or a few houses over <laughs> And you go in their house and you, and you realize, my goodness, this is exactly, e either this is exactly li like my house, because <laughs> it's literally the, exactly the same, or it's a mirror reflection. <laughs> wow, my parents' bedroom is on the left side and, and mine's on the right, but yours is exactly the opposite. Okay, that's a horizontal reflection. Alternatively, if you, in your mind's eye, imagine looking in a, in a full-length mirror. Imagine looking in a full-length mirror and you see your, your reflection and then you hold up your right hand. What hand is the person in the mirror holding up? Their left. Their left. Their left hand. Or if you don't like mirrors, maybe you like giving high fives. If you were giving someone a high five and they were standing right in front of you and you're not doing a crossover hand high five but a straight forward and back high five. If you're using your right hand, then your colleague must be using their left hand. Okay, so 
the reason why that's the case, the reason why when you hold up your right hand, the person in the mirror holds up their left, is because we live in a three-dimensional world, and we have the following. That when you look, when you look in the mirrored world, the horizontal axis is the same. Which is why when you hold up your hand, and you move it side to side, the person in the mirror also moves their hand side to side. And when you hold up your hand and you move your hand up and down, the person in the mirror also moves their hand up and down. But here's the difference, is that when you, when you hold up your hand and you move it toward the mirror, the person in the mirror also moves it toward the mirror, which is to say, hands are getting closer right, to each other. So what the person in the mirror is doing in the in and out axis is the opposite of what you're doing the opposite in and out. It's the same left and right, it's the same up and down, but it's opposite in and out. Which is why the person in the mirror holds up the opposite hand. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's see what this means algebraically for us. So these are reflections. So in the first place, we have a horizontal reflection. So by virtue of it being horizontal, that tells us which variable we're playing with. What variable are we playing with? The x. The specific transformation is that x becomes negative x. <coughs> so x is negated. <coughs> That's algebraically. Geometrically, it would be like the following. So I'm going to draw something here. <clears throat> so suppose I draw the red. So here's a red bit of the function. A little zigzag thing and another blue bit here. So this function consists of two pieces, a red part and a blue part. And what I want you to do is I want you to tell me what would happen if we negated all of the x-coordinates. So for example, this point that I'm pointing to because I didn't draw a scale, you can't tell me exactly what that point is, but you can tell me the SIGN of its coordinates. What is the SIGN of its horizontal coordinate? Negative, because it's on the left side. What is the SIGN of its vertical coordinate? Positive, because it's on the top side. Okay, if you were to negate its horizontal coordinate, where would it go? Yeah, it would go over here. Right, that point would go over here. And then you could do this one point at a time. And yes, if you were just looking at the red, what you would see is that the red would flip over the y-axis. Now, alternatively, you can imagine being the red. If you were the red, and you were looking at the y-axis, and the y-axis was a mirror, then what would you see? What would you see when you do that? So, you would see something that looks like this. If I was a perfect artist, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay, that's what the red would do. What would the blue do? If you were the blue, and you were looking at the y-axis, and it was a mirror, what would you see? That's what I want you to draw on this one. <clears throat> so I'm going to draw a, a kind of subtle mistake. So if, if this was to flip over to the other side, right? because we're getting used to this flipping 
business. If this blue was to flip over to the other side, maybe it would look like this. Is that right? Yeah. Why is that not right? It's just the shape. Right. So let's imagine, again, in your mind's eye, looking at a full-length mirror. If you were looking at a full-length mirror and you could see yourself head to toe, and then you take your, your foot, your right foot, to, just to be definite, and you start edging it toward the mirror, would the person in the mirror start edging their foot away from yours? Wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> so no, they edge their foot towards you, right? When, you, when you're standing in the full length mirror. So it wouldn't look like that, right? This, if that's your foot, then the reflected foot should still be close to the mirror. So it should look more or less like this. Any question about this? <clears throat> so I could say, for example, uh, no, I won't do that yet. That's not time for that yet. So two, vertical reflection. So by virtue of it being vertical, what variable are we playing with? The y's. And would anyone care to speculate what the transformation is, algebraically? Yeah. Ys become negative Ys. And so if I again try to draw the same thing, more or less. Now again, it's a reflection, except the mirror is different now. Instead of, instead of the y-axis being the mirror, like it was for this one, the x-axis, the horizontal axis, will be the mirror. And what it'll be like, it'll be like taking this, taking this and flipping it this way. Which is to say, if you were the red, and you were looking down at a mirror, what would you see? <clears throat> well, something like this. <clears throat> and if you were the blue, and you were looking up at a mirror, you would see something like this. And to say it again, but differently, if, if I was to take this plot and pick it up off the paper and twist it and turn it over and set it right here and do this kind of action, then that's what you would see. <clears throat> okay. So for example, take y is absolute x. What is the characteristic shape of y is absolute x? A v. And then, supposing we give this input 3, what would the output be? Also 3. So now what I want you to do is I want you to fill in the blank for the equation, and I also want you to draw what would occur 
if you do a vertical reflection. So in the first place, because it's vertical, which variable are we playing with? Y. The y's. And because it's a reflection, that algebraically, that means negation. So that means that y is being negated. So the new formula is negative y is absolute x. So that's the algebraic consequence. The geometric consequence, which is to say the shape consequence, is that this shape right here would hold water, but the vertically reflected shape would shed water, like a roof. And notably, supposing we gave this one the input 3 what would the output be? Negative 3. Which is to say that a vertical reflection, if when you're dealing with a function, a vertical reflection negates all of the outputs. So if you have a function, and at 10 its output is 27, then the, vertic then the vertical reflection of that function its output will now be negative 27 at the same point. <clears throat> okay. So same kind of problem. And just as a just as a warning, many students are just a little bit disturbed mentally about this one. But that that's that's one of the reasons why I'm why I've chosen it. So let's start with this one. Y is the square root of x. So please remind me, uh, what does the plot of y is square root x look like? Mm -hmm. So it's only on the right-hand side, for one thing. It's only on the right half plane. Why, why is the plot of y is x squared, y, y is square root of x, only on the right half side? You don't have any negative to the right. Yeah. Because square root, that's an even radical. It requires non-negative inputs, which is to say the x's can't be negative. So they've all got to be on the right. OK. At any rate, this is one of the plots that you were requested to memorize. More or less, that's what square root x looks like. Now what I want you to do is I want you to perform a horizontal reflection. So geometrically, most students have no, no problem with it. So could you look at this red? Can you imagine being that red? And since it's a horizontal reflection, which, what mirror are you looking at? The y-axis is a mirror, and you're looking at it. What would this red see if it was looking at the y-axis and the y-axis was a mirror? It'd be just like that. So geometrically, most students have no problem with it. And then what's the equation then? This is where the problem comes in. 
So it, it would be so. First off, because it's a horizontal reflection, what variable are we playing with? Okay, and in particular, we're not playing with the y's. So it will be y is equal, and then I just need to write this exact same thing, except I need to make it negative x. So that'll be square root of negative x. And most students look at this and say, you know what, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this situation. Is that okay? Can you write that? Couldn't you say the negative of the square root of x? No. The negative most definitely must be inside. <clears throat> well, let's wonder. Could I plug in, could you plug in 10? X is 10. No. V visually, why couldn't you plug in 10? There's no graph. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing over here at 10. And you couldn't plug in 10 million either. Could you plug in it? Is there anything at all that you could plug in? No. Yeah, you could plug in negative numbers, right? What if you plugged in x is negative 16? Well, negative negative 16 is 16, and the square root of that is 4. What if you plugged in negative, uh, negative 100? Well, negative negative 100 is 100, and the square root of that is 10. How can you see that visually? Because now the plot is on the left side, right? Uh, correct. Which is to say, so if you're not comfortable with this, that that's okay because, or you're 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 not you're not alone anyway. I I can say the question differently. Is it possible that negative x could ever be positive? Yeah. When? When x is negative. When x is negative. So. This, the, the phrase negative x, that, that's, not a, that's not a state, that's an action. Negate the x. Negative x is positive. It can be arbitrarily positive, right? It would be great to have, you know, I'd, I'd love to have negative x dollars if x is negative a billion. That'd be great. That'd be terrific. I'd, I'd just walk right out. Just, <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't walk out. <coughs> Any question about this? Okay, good. So here's an interesting example. Uh, let's draw y is x squared. But for reasons that are not quite clear, yet. I'm going to draw the right side in red, and I'm going to draw the left side in blue. Okay, so now <clears throat> I want you to horizontally reflect this. So in the first place, because it's a horizontal reflection, which variable are we playing with? X. X's. And because it's a reflection, what algebraic operation are we doing? Negating. So X becomes negative X. Which is to say that we will do Y is equal to, and then that X will be replaced with a negative X, so negative X squared. Now, can this be simplified at all? Yeah, the, the negation squares away. So this would be just x squared, which is to say, when you horizontally reflect this,
then you get the following. Now I'm going to match the colors. If red were to reflect to the other side, then red would then red would be like this, and then the blue like this. Now for for the so I I drew it in color so that you could see the motion. But now imagine that you can't see color then what I want you to observe is that these are the same. Same picture. Horizontal reflection had no effect. So what you would say is that this is horizontally symmetric. Okay, so then can you imagine any other plots that are horizontally symmetric? Absolute value, right? That's a V, that's a horizontally symmetric thing. Uh, what else? Can you think of any others? 1 over x squared, the volcano, right? The volcano is horizontally symmetric. What else? A horizontal line. Right? Any horizontal line is, is also horizontally symmetric. Right. So this is x squared, right? And then notably, the negation squared away, well, that's going to work for if, if the exponent is any even number, right? This could be 22. It would work just the same. Interesting. OK, how about this one? This, this next one is a little more complicated to watch the action for. So now, let's do y is x cubed. And I'm going to draw the two arms in different colors. I'll draw the positive arm in red. And the negative arm in blue. And now we're going to do two different things. I want you to make a horizontal reflection <coughs> to over here. And this way, I want you to make a vertical reflection to over here. Okay. So horizontal, that's x. And, bec and because it's a reflection, that's a negation. So we're going to negate x. So y is negative x cubed. And then, so that's analogous to being here. The, the, the negative squared away, so surely it cubes away. Nah, right? It doesn't, because 3 is odd. So that would be negative x cubed, like so. So notice that here, the analogous step squared away, but doesn't cube away. So horizontally, let's watch. Where would the red go if we did this, if we reflected this one horizontally? Where would the red go? Right. In, into the top left. So it would look like this. and the blue into the bottom right. Okay. A vertical reflection. Since it's vertical, what variable are we playing with? The y's. And because it's a reflection, what are we doing with it? Negating. So then, negative y 
is x cubed. And then there's nothing really to uh, nothing really to simplify there. And this one was y is negative x cubed. So now, supposing we start with this one, and then we perform a vertical reflection of this one. Where does the red go? Bottom right. That's not a very good line. Let's fix that. And the blue in the top left. Now, what I'd like for you to observe presently <coughs> is these two. Now, if you were colorblind, if you couldn't, if you could not distinguish between red and blue, notice that these are the same. So this function has the interesting property that performing a horizontal reflection is the same as performing a vertical reflection, supposing you're colorblind. Okay, now here's the, if that's not neat enough, let's finish it and say, well, what if from here we perform a horizontal reflection? And if from here we perform a vertical reflection? So from here, if we take this equation and perform a horizontal reflection from this equation, because it's horizontal, what variable are we playing with? The x's. And because it's a reflection, what are we doing to that x? We're negating it. So this would be negative y is that x becomes negative x, so negative x cubed. And then the negative does not cube away. Rather, we obtain this. And now, can this equation be simplified? Yeah. If you multiply or divide both sides by negative 1, then the result is this. OK, how about this one? Suppose we do this now. From this equation right here, if we perform a vertical reflection. Since we're performing a vertical operation, which variable are we playing with? Y. The y's. And because it's a reflection, what are we doing to that y? Negating it. And then can this be simplified? Yes, because it's exactly the same as that one, right? So then this would be y's x cubed which means now starting from either one of these we'll start with this one just arbitrarily if we start with this one and we perform a vertical reflection where does the blue go top right which is to say we do this right? grab it and turn it over the blue goes to the top right And where does the red go? Bottom left. Now ignore this one for a moment. Suppose we start with this one, and we perform a horizontal reflection. Where does the blue go? Since it's a horizontal reflection, it goes to the top right. And where does the red go? Bottom left. Which is to say that from these two corners, from this corner, if you perform a horizontal reflection, you get that. And from this corner, if you perform a vertical reflection, you get that. And notably, if you were colorblind, these are the same.
So this one's a little more complicated. But in the end, it's the same idea, is that from here, the same kind of idea, from here, if you perform a horizontal reflection, then there's no change. This one is that, well, if you start here, performing a horizontal reflection is the same as performing a vertical reflection. Or, if you like, performing a horizontal followed by vertical reflection is the same as doing nothing. Interesting. So now, what I want you to imagine is that, okay, we, for, this, for this kind, for this kind right here, we started with y is x squared. Do you agree that it also would have worked for y is x to 4? Or y is x to 44? It would have worked exactly the same. And how about for this one? We did it with y is x cubed. What else would it have worked with? How about y is x to 5? It would have worked just fine with y is x to 5. Or y is x to 55. That would have worked just fine too. For that reason, for that reason, uh, one of the ways to categorize functions is by parity. So even power functions look like this, both arms up. Odd power functions look like this, left arm down, right arm up. And we're going to classify functions as being even or odd whether or not they have this property, that a horizontal reflection does nothing, or a horizontal reflection is the same as a vertical reflection. So here we go. <clears throat> Function parity. So remember, parity refers to evenness and oddness. That might help you remember why, why the word parity is chosen. It has to do with, you know, back in grade school when you're learning about integers and whether or not integers are even or odd. I think we can all agree, probably, that 24 is an even number. But it's a little bit more difficult to say why 24 is an even number. Why is 24 an even number? Sorry? <laughs> right. right. So it, it's, it's evenly divisible by 2, you might say. And then that, that just further raises the question. What does that mean? Well, if you take 22 things, like 22 M&Ms, and if you, if you were set the task of making pairs of M&Ms, then you could make 12 pairs. And how many would be left over? Zero would be left over when you're making pairs. Supposing you had 23 M&Ms and you were making pairs. How many pairs could you make? 11. And then how many would be left over? One. So 23 is odd because you can't make you can't make all pairs. And that's the reason why the word parity is referring to evenness and oddness. That's what that means. That's the connection. So now, that being said, you also need to remember that um, don't, don't make the mistake of thinking that every number must therefore be even or odd. Because that's just not true. Co so can someone give me an example of a, of a number? So 2, 22, 26, those are all even. 13, that's odd. Can someone give us a number that is neither even nor odd? Pi. Pi is not even. It's not odd. Only integers can be even or odd. Only integers have parity. 
in the same way, some functions are going to be even, some functions are going to be odd, and some functions are going to be neither one of these. Okay. So, function f is called even when f of negative x is f of x. So that's a that's a lovely, completely opaque math definition, <laughs> right? What does that even mean? Well, notice that the that when moving from side to side, that the x is being negated, right? From here to here, x is being negated. And what is it geometrically? What does that mean to negate x? A horizontal reflection. So what this is saying is that this function is such that horizontally reflecting it does nothing. So that means that this function f is horizontally symmetric. Like a parabola. So for example, like a parabola. So this is even. <clears throat> Which is to say that you should be able to look at just the left side and imagine being the left side and looking at the mirror, the y-axis mirror, and you should see exactly the same thing on the other side. So, so you do for this example. Now, what if I take the parabola and I move it over a little bit? Say, like, like this. Is that even? Yeah. <laughs> Let's imagine being a side. So if you were just the, on the right side, you were just this little bit right here, and you were looking in the y-axis mirror, what would you have to see in order for you to be even? You'd have to see a little, little bit right there, right? Is that what you see? No. Alternatively, if you're just the left part, just this part that you can see, and you're looking at the y-axis mirror, what would you have to see in order to be even? Well, the result would look kind of like a W, right? In order to be even. Is that what you see? No. Which is to say, this is not horizontally symmetric. So this is not even. And then, I could say, all right, suppose that I give you this. And I say, I want you to complete this plot so that it represents an even function. then what would you have to do? Yeah, so from here, right, I'd have to do this business, something like this. Now it's even. Okay, <clears throat> two. Function f is called odd. <clears throat> when now the condition is 
f of negative x is negative f of x. So now, algebraically, these two scenarios look pretty similar. Pretty similar. Except in the even case, the even case is saying sort of that the function squashes the negative. In the same kind of way that if you square a negative x, then you get x squared, just like, just like that. Whereas this one is saying that, well, when you negate the x, the function doesn't squash it. The, the negative sort of is able to sneak outside. Like when you're cubing a negative x. So, i.e., what this means. <clears throat> so if we ignore this negative for just a moment, just ignore it. If, it. if it was just like that, that would be saying that there's a horizontal reflection going on. But when you add this one more, and it's now outside of the function, that means that now you're negating the output. Negating the output is a vertical reflection. So what this is saying, it's a very terse mathematical way to say a horizontal reflection is the same as a vertical reflection. That's what that means. I.e., uh, a horizontal reflection is the same as a vertical reflection. Now I have to say something that I don't like because I think it's meaningless but it's what your textbook says and it's what's all over YouTube and everywhere else. So this even functions are said to have a horizontal symmetry. Odd functions are said to have an origin symmetry. I think that's a terrible phrase because what would that even mean? But whatever. I wasn't there when it was named. <clears throat> so, so here is a picture. <clears throat> So the red. Now on the same plot, on the same plot, I want you to draw what you would get if you horizontally reflected the red. So you can do it in pieces. So for example, what would that piece look like if it was horizontally reflected? Now, what would that piece look like if it was horizontally reflected? And what I want you to observe about the graphite is what would you get? So we, we drew the graf graphite by horizontally reflecting the red. What would you get if you vertically reflected the red? the same thing. So you take the red, you take the red and you turn it over this way, you get the graphite. You take the red and you turn it over this way and you get the graphite. So this is odd. So how about this one? So my question to you is, is it odd? No, right? it's not odd. Now you might have a slight misfire and say, 
but it's even. Well, I agree that it's even, but that wasn't my question. So this is not odd. And then finally, <coughs> say, okay, what I want you to do is I want you to complete this drawing I want you to complete this drawing so that the resulting function is odd. Now the way you do this is you take the red and you perform both reflections in, in whichever order you like, first horizontally, then vertically, or first vertically, then horizontally. So if you were to reflect it horizontally, then what would, what would become of this, of this thing? Where would it go? It would go over here, right? And then, if you were to take this and reflect it vertically, where would it go? It would go up. So this, not this one, this is just there to help us see it. This is graphite is the completion of the red so that the result is an odd function. Okay, so have a nice Monday.